All right, welcome to week three of the American Revolution. And so today we're going to be talking about winter. And as you can see by this uh, image, it's from a portrait and it was created into a stamp. It doesn't look like a very comfortable winter. This is the winter of Valley Forge. It takes place between 1777 and 1778. We're going to talk about major battle that was a turning point before then, known as the Battle of Saratoga. And we're also going to talk about the importance of the French alliance that develops during this time. Remember, we're always thinking about how were American colonists able to become an independent nation? What were the key events that actually led to that independence to Britain letting go? And so it all begins in Massachusetts at the battles of Lexington and Concord, and then the Battle of Bunker Hill, which led pretty much, you can see that one was a Patriot victory and one was a British victory. And so there's no clear winner at this point. The King George definitely decides that this is sedition, this is war, and he's going to put his back behind it, his money behind it. And so we have the Second Continental Congress, which basically replies in 1776 with a Declaration of Independence. That declaration that was addressed to King George, to the British Parliament, to the world, and to the people living in the colonies. Of course, then we have the Battle of Brooklyn in New York, which gives the British a resounding stronghold in that New York area, New York City Harbor, which is going to be a major place for ships and troops to come in and out of. They're going to maintain that for the duration of the war. And then a major turning point that we have in 1776 is right at the end, in December 25th, Delaware crossing of that Washington does at the Battle of Trenton, and then he follows that up quickly in January, the Battle of Princeton, both victorious wins, major turning points. It's a morale booster. Uh, the Continental Congress continues to put their support behind Washington. He's proving himself to be a leader. The Continental Army is proving that it can fight against the British Army. And so what do we see next? We see a major turning point. This you know, historians will argue which were the, which was the most important battle, and the Battle of Brooklyn is very important. This battle here is definitely a major turning point. We're going to explain why. All right, so one thing to think about is that the battles don't happen exclusive of other battles. So while we focus on this Battle of Saratoga that's happening in the fall of 1777, there's also other battles waging in Ohio that's west. We have battles that are happening in the south, in South Carolina, in North Carolina, parts of Georgia. So you could be in any one of the 13 colonies, and Ohio is not even a colony. It's uh, part of a territory that you could still be experiencing battles, and you could still be experiencing and hearing gunshots and seeing people fighting with each other face to face. So while we talk about specific battles, it doesn't mean there's not other fighting happening in the other colonies. All right. So the Battle of Saratoga in upstate New York happens in October of 1777 at Saratoga Springs. And so the Patriots have a good hold on Boston, but remember the British have a even better hold on New York area. And we also are going to have the British up in the area above New York. That's going to be in what we now call Canada. And the British have several forts up throughout that area. So the battle goes on and it happens over a course of about two weeks, but we're going to focus on the end result of that battle. And the end result is a British sur surrender. So it's not a retreat like Washington did in the Battle of Brooklyn, where he retreated his troops to safety, this is an actual surrender. And so when you surrender, you know that your troops, your soldiers are going to be taken prisoner. You know that as an officer, you could be taken prisoner. And so this is very, very different. You're going to have to have your soldiers lay down their guns. Their guns can now be confiscated and used by the Continental Army any supplies, any weapons that you have, any um, food that you have, any sleeping supplies that you have, horses, uh, any food that you have, all of that can be taken 
by the army that you surrender to. And one thing that's unique about this, and we see this in the painting. Now, General Washington is not here. Okay. Um, he is not present in Saratoga. He's elsewhere fighting a different campaign. But you see here that you have the red with the British, and you notice that you see the American flag. And one thing was that was unique is typically the officer who's surrendering will give his sword. That is a sign of I surrender. And so what was unique here is that the sword is actually given back to him. It, and he was brought into the tent and he's treated as a gentleman. They sit down and have tea. And so the officer of the Continental Army does not belittle him. He does not show disrespect to him and he treats him as an equal. And, and this was unique. This is not typically how it's done. And this Battle of Saratoga, people wrote about it at the time. And in fact, the Continental Congress wrote that there should be a national day of Thanksgiving for this event, that this should be a day that should always be remembered. And we're going to talk about why, what was so important about that. All right. So let's look who we have. We have, it was General Horatio Gates leading the American Continental Army at Saratoga, right? He's the man in the Navy and buff color. And then um, General Bernion. And so if we look at the numbers, the British were outnumbered two to one, right? But look at the casualties. It's almost three to one, almost three British casualties for every American casualty. And a casualty could be a simple wounding or a death. It, they're all grouped together. All right, so we're going to get back to Saratoga in a moment. Next, let's move on to Pennsylvania and what's happening there. This is the next big turning point, and it's not even in battle. We have Valley Forge. This is the winter of 1777, a few months after Saratoga. All right, and it's in Pennsylvania. So let's look on a map where that is. You see the British flag in Philadelphia. So the British have commandeered Philadelphia, which is a huge trading harbor. And they have New York City two major, major ports that they control. So what Washington decides to do is he's going to camp at Valley Forge. Valley Forge is just a few miles, you can see, outside of Philadelphia. It's heavily wooded. You have fresh water. You can see the uh, Skokill uh, River that comes through there. And so this is going to allow them to know if the British are advancing far away enough. Uh, and yet close enough that if something was to erupt, if there's a reason for an attack on either side, they're going to be able to move very quickly. So there's a national park at Valley Forge. I've actually toured there. And they have samples of these cabins. So this is from a reenactment that we see this photo of. And the rangers at the park have actually tested out how warm these cabins would be. They're more like huts. You could fit about six men in there. They're not very large, about the size of one, one room. And they would have small wood burning stoves in there or little fires in there. And they say that outside it maybe keep about 40 degrees, 50 degrees. So what was that about? 12 degrees Celsius, somewhere in there. And then you, I like this photo because you see that there were women at the camp. Many of the soldiers, their wives followed them. If they didn't have children, many women simply went and followed them. And what they would do is the women would be doing the laundry. They would help with meal preparation. They would help with uh, nursing the wounded, uh, with clothing, with mending problems of if your uniform is torn, if you need a shirt fixed, different things women would sort of be camp followers and they would help set up and take down now the men built huts because they know they're there for the winter i've mentioned before that it's very typical in this time in the 1700s that fighting did not go on in the winter that the, everyone both sides would take a break and regroup and so you're going to have several different forces come in several different units if you were at valley forge you would have heard a variety of languages, you would have seen a variety of people from all parts of the world. 
anyone that was coming, anyone who lived in the colonies that was going to be part of helping the Continental Army would be there. So you would see uh, Washington had some slaves with him that did some of the cooking for him and did some of the housework for him. So you'd see enslaved people. You would see free black people, some who were members of the Continental Army. There were Native American groups that came to help and participate both as part of the army, uh, as part of the camp and support. You, again, you would see women. Sometimes you would even see young children. Some of the officers wives and children came to meet with them for the winter to spend part of the time in the winter with them now one of the benefits of valley forge and why it's considered to be a turning point is because of general von steuben so general von steuben is from europe he is a well-known officer and he's an officer without a war so benjamin franklin has been over in europe trying to get assistance for the American Revolution. General von Steuben hears of Benjamin Franklin, chats with him. Benjamin Franklin writes a letter to the Second Continental Congress, basically a, a resume re um, reference saying that he thinks he would benefit the army. And so von Steuben comes over, sails across the Atlantic and joins Washington at Valley Forge. Von Steuben immediately goes to work training the Continental Army. I think this image here is very good because you can see not everyone's in the same uniform. They don't look like they're all very well trained. And Von Steuben does an excellent job. He drills them. They're going to have drills on preparing your weapons, getting in lines, attacking the enemy, bayonet practice, how to get into formation, how to listen. The drummers are going to learn the drums, that the, uh, the tunes that they're supposed to play to alert, to stop, to retreat, to move forward, to shoot, um, all those things. In fact, von Steuben does such a great job that into the 1800s, the U.S. Army was still using his drills and his recommendations as part of their training. Another turning point that with Valley Forge are vaccinations. So smallpox was a dreaded disease at that time. And if we think about it, the Continental Army were people who had lived in the colonies. Many of them had, were born in the colonies and many of them had not been exposed to smallpox. Where you have the British soldiers coming from England where smallpox is still going around. And most of them have either been exposed to the disease or have been vaccinated against the disease. There's an outbreak of smallpox during the American Revolution and General Washington all um, demands that all of the soldiers in the Continental Army be vaccinated for smallpox. Now, why does that matter? Well, one, if you're vaccinated, you're not going to get sick. If you're not sick, you're able to fight. Also, this time, the vaccinations weren't quite as pure as they are now or as safe. And often people would get a little bit sick, not quite up to fighting. And so this rest time at Valley Forge allowed them the time that they needed to heal from the vaccine and be better prepared to fight. And some people say that this simple measure of having the troops vaccinated probably prevented a major outbreak through the colonies and definitely gave support to the Continental Army. I also like this image because you can see how hard the winter was. It was very, very hard to get supplies for the soldiers in the, in the, the area as they cut down wood to burn, as they built their huts, they had to go further. There was less and less forest. And so they had to go further and further to find wood to heat themselves with. Many of the soldiers did not have shoes. They were in very short supply. And one of those reasons is because these were colonies of England. Most supplies that they were getting of shoes and cloth were coming from England. Well, obviously, if they're at war with England, they're not going to be buying any of these things from England. Also, you have people fighting. They're not able to make the shoes that they might have made before. You don't have big factories supplying the uniforms and equipment that the soldiers need. So quite a few people became very sick. They had um, 
whether it was a stomach flu, stomach viruses, uh, other diseases would go very quickly through the camp. You didn't have, you know, there was not a lot of fresh water to wash with. Washing wasn't a thing that um, people did back then like they do now. So it was very, very difficult. But good news comes. And again, we're back to that Battle of Saratoga. Benjamin Franklin doing his best with Thomas Jefferson to plead for help from France, from Holland, from Spain. They get help from France. The French king, Louis XVI, decides to go ahead and support the American colonies. And a lot of that is based on the success of the Battle of Saratoga. That was such a big win. And because the British actually do surrender, not retreat, that's a turning point. And it's the second turning point because the French are going to support. They're going to pledge money. They're going to pledge gunpowder. They're going to pledge uniforms. They're going to pledge Navy help. It's basically the backbone that the Continental Army needed. Not only that, but the French gunpowder was also the best in the world. So it was during Valley Forge's time that the news of the French supporting of the Continental Congress and the Continental Army comes through. So this is fantastic, fantastic news. Um, George Washington did a lot. He worked a lot with the Continental Congress. In fact, he brought them in and said, you need to see what these men are going through at Valley Forge. We need food. We need clothing. We need money. And uh, he worked very diligently to try to get what he needed for the troops. It was just the Congress was not very good at sending them what they needed in a timely manner. All right. So next video, we're going to look at some more turning points that happened. So 1777, 1778, big years, especially at spring of 1778, when you have the men in the Continental Army that are in the spring of 78, they're going to be best, better trained. They're going to be, or their health is going to be improving. They're immunized. They're ready to fight. And they have the support, financial support and military support coming from the French as they get to go further into the summer of 1778.